girls and boys. Today we're going to read a book called Moody Cow Learns Compassion. Compassion is when we try to think about how the other person would feel and try and help them. This book was written by Carrie Lee McLean. That's the author. They wrote all the words. Moody Cow Learns Compassion by Carrie Lee McLean. My name is Moody Cow. Well, it's actually Peter, but everyone calls me Moody Cow, except for one time when my friends were calling me Coward Cow because they thought I was a wimp. It all started when my friend Bully and I caught a garter snake by the pond out back. Bully said snakes have to eat live food, so we caught a cricket. I was going to feed it to the snake, I promise. But when I whispered, sorry, to the cricket first, Bully laughed. You are such a wimp, he said, as he grabbed the poor cricket and fed it right to the snake. The little guy squirmed half in and half out of the, mouth, the snake's mouth, and Bully shouted, awesome. He was so excited to see the cricket struggle. Let's call the snake Jaws, he hollered. I guess I was glad that Jaws got a meal, but the whole thing was making me sad. So I handed Jaws to Bully and told him to go home. Bully was so mad, he said, Oh, I get it. You're such a wimp. You can't handle feeding Jaws. See you later, coward cow. Don't call me that, I said. I'm Moody Cow. And then I stomped back home. Is it right to call our people names, our friends names, when we're upset with them? No, that's not going to make anything better. That night, I had the worst nightmare. I was as tiny as a cricket and a huge snake slithered up to me. Its jaws opened wide, sharp teeth dripped with venom. My little legs were shaking and I screamed, don't eat me, don't eat me, ah! I'm sure my mom thought I was nuts screaming like that. At breakfast, she said, remember to tell grandfather about the dream that you had when he comes to do the mind jar with you after school. Remember when we read Moody Cow Meditates and we found out how Peter could sit with his grandfather and breathe in and out quietly for a while and wait for all the upsetting thoughts to drift to the bottom of the jar. That gives him enough time to sit still and breathe quietly and put all the bad thoughts, all the upsetting things that happened away and then not think about them again. That's called meditating. So I guess grandfather is doing that with him every day after school. That's great. Grandfather and I sat on our meditation cushions, just like we always did after school. I got out my mind jar, the special jar of water that we use to represent my mind, and the sparkles that represent upsetting thoughts. This, I said, putting a pinch of sparkles into the jar, is me getting mad because Bully called me Coward Cow all day. Why would he do that? asked Grandfather. Because he thinks I'm a wimp. Because I don't like feeding live crickets to Jaws. Who's Jaws? A snake we caught by the pond. Hmm, Grandfather said. I wouldn't like feeding live crickets to Jaws either. Just think how those poor crickets must feel. That's compassion. Thinking about how other people feel and trying to do something about it. I know how they'd feel, I told him. I had a nightmare last night that I was a cricket and a huge snake came and tried to eat me for dinner. I woke up screaming like a little baby. Grandfather's huge shoulders shook with laughter and he smiled gently, not like a baby, like someone who understands how it feels to be eaten alive. Better put a pinch, a bunch of sparkles in for that one. I put in three really big handfuls of sparkles. Grandfather shook up the mind jar and we sat quietly watching it. I breathed in and out a few times, in and out, in and out, in, and out, one by one all those thoughts drifted down to the bottom of the jar. As the sparkles settled down I noticed my mind did too. Feel better? Grandfather asked. I tried not to smile, but I couldn't help it. I did feel better. Now let's go do something fun, Grandfather said. Come with me. 
What on earth is Grandfather up to? I wondered as we picked up Bully from across the street. But Grandfather wasn't talking. Next, we stopped at the pet store. Are these crickets from another country or are they from around here? Grandfather asked. The salesman pulled out a cricket for us to look at. These are gray crickets, just like the ones from around here. Grandfather paid for a clear plastic bag filled with live crickets. Finally, we drove home and Grandfather brought the crickets to the backyard. He smiled mysteriously. Bully and I just looked at each other. We sat looking at the cr crickets. Cool, Bully said. Look at the ones at the bottom that aren't moving. Hmm, Grandfather said. I wonder what it feels like to be stuck inside of there. Crawling all over the ones that are so sad they can't move. I couldn't help shivering. Not very good, I guessed. Bully's face fell. He frowned. Not very good at all, he said. Instead of feeding them to the snakes, what do you say we release them and let them go? Grandfather asked. Should we let them go on their happy way? Yes, Bully shouted. Awesome, I cried. Grandfather opened the bag and we carefully held them. Let's look for a good spot, somewhere where they can find food and water. How about in the cool shade under a bush or a tree? I found a good spot by the stream that feeds our pond. It was like a cozy cave hidden under a little juniper bush. It looks nice and safe under this bush, Grandfather, and there's lots of food and water. Okay, Grandfather said. First, we say, may you be happy to the crickets, and then we'll release them on the count of three. May you be happy, we hollered together. Then we counted one, two, three. We opened our hands and the crickets hopped down under the bush. Hip, hip, hooray, Grandfather shouted, raising his fist high. Hip, hip, hooray, we called together, punching our fists up into the air. Grandfather lay back in the cool evening grass, and Bully and I stretched out too. All was quiet. Then we heard one cricket's song. Pretty soon, they all chimed in. We just lay there listening and looking up at the sky until the sun set and stars came out. All of a sudden, Bully sat up. Wait here, he called, disappearing around the corner of the house. He brought Jaws from his cage across the street and he stood away from us by the pond. Do you think he'll be happy here, he asked. You bet, Grandfather chuckled. I believe that is exactly where you found him. Bully held Jaws out near the water's edge, and we all said, May you be happy. And the long green stripes slithered into the cool water of the pond. Bully sighed. I guess swimming in a pond is a lot more fun than being stuck in that dinky, stinky cage. I think you're right, said Grandfather. Wild animals are happiest in the wild, just like pets are happiest in your home. Wait a minute, I said. What if Joss eats the crickets? That, my friend, is the circle of life. I'm afraid everyone needs to eat something to stay alive. And at least Bully gave our cricket friends a fighting chance by releasing Joss far away from them. Yeah, and at least they won't be stuck now in that creepy bag, Bully said. I can imagine how the little guys feel now. Then Grandfather got up and stretched. I'm hungry. What have we got to eat? I could go for... Some nice, crunchy crickets, he said, smiling his crooked smile and winking at me. Bully stopped, horrified. He's joking, I whispered, and we all laughed out loud. May all crickets be happy. May all snakes be happy. May all pets be happy. May all children be happy. May all parents be happy. May all beings be happy. So they learn to be compassionate, to think about how other people feel, in this case, other crickets feel, and then to try to do something about it. We should all try to have compassion for each other. If somebody's having a hard time, we shouldn't make fun of them. If somebody's having a hard time, we should do the right thing to try to help them. That's compassion. Thank you for reading this book with me today.